So, uh, speaking of supercomputers, they can predict every single thing about the uh, what's going to ever happen. Uh, what do you think about the philosophical thought experiment of us living in a simulation? Do you often find yourself pondering of us living in a simulation of this question? Do you think it is at all a useful thought experiment? I think it's very easy to become fascinated with all of these possibilities, and they're completely legitimate uh, possibilities. You know, like, do I, is there some validity to like solipsism? Uh, well, it can never be falsified or, or disproven. So, I mean, sure, you could be a, a figment of my uh, imagination. Uh, it doesn't mean that I will act according to this possibility. I'm not going to call you mean names and <laughs> <laughs> just to test the system uh, to see how robust it is to distortions. Yeah. So, I mean, all of these existential thought experiments are completely possible. We could be brains in jars. It doesn't mean that our experience will feel any less valid. And so it doesn't make a difference to me if uh, you are some number of, of ones and zeros or you are a figment of my imagination, which lives in a in a stored stored away brain. Uh, it will never really change my experience uh, knowing that that's a possibility. And so I try to, I try to avoid making decisions based on such contemplations. You know, if, if we take this this previous issue of of free will, um, I could I could decide that um, because I have no choice in my life, if I uh, lie around in bed all day and eat chips, I was destined to do that thing. And if I make that decision, then I was destined to do that thing. <laughs> It would be a really poor decision uh, for me to make. I have school and a, a dozen commitments. Uh, There's somebody listening to this right now, probably hundreds of people sitting down, eating chips and feeling terrible about themselves. Those are, so how if, dare you, sir? If they're listening to this, they're clearly, they're clearly curious about um, possibilities of of thought. It's not the it's not the bed and the chips that, <laughs> okay. that makes the man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the bed or the chips that makes the man. Yet another quotable from Zev Weinstein. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but you don't think of it as a useful thought experiment from an engineering perspective of, you know, virtual reality of thinking how we can create further and further immersive worlds. Like, would it be possible to create worlds that are so immersive that we would rather live in that world versus the real world. I mean, that's another possible trajectory of the world that you're growing up in, is we're more and more Im immersing ourselves into the digital world. For now, it's screens and looking at the screens and socializing the screens, but it's possible to potentially create a world that's also visually for all of our human senses, as immersive as the physical world, and then you know, it's a, uh, to me, it's an engineering question of how yeah. difficult is it to create a world that's as immersive and more fun than uh, the the world we currently live yeah, in. It's a terrifying concept, and I hate to say it. We might live happier lives in a virtual reality headset thirty years from now than we are currently living. This future, the digital future, worries you. It worries me. On the other hand, it may be. It may be a, a better al alternative to um, fighting for whatever people are clinging on to in our uh, non-virtual world, or at least the world that we don't yet know is virtual.